Good evening, sir. Talk of Springs, how are you? Much better. Anybody in the audience been to this show before? A lot of you, welcome back. Thank you. For the rest of you, let me introduce myself. I am comic hypnotist Michael Ray, and tonight I am going to be your host. Your host into a world of the bizarre. A world not unlike that of parapsychology and ufology. I am, of course, talking about the world of hypnosis. Now, the reason I make these parallels is because, like parapsychology and ufology, hypnosis does have sufficient amount of documentation, but has yet to be fully accepted by the scientific community as a whole. Although the techniques have been used throughout the centuries by Celtic Druids, Chinese teachers of religion, and African witch doctors, it was not until relatively recent history that we, as the general public, know anything about hypnosis. The year was 1776, and an Austrian doctor released his doctoral dissertation entitled The Planetarium Flux. In that paper, he theorized that you and I, like the planet Earth itself, were magnetic in nature. If you or I were sick, physically or mentally, it was because, according to his theories, that our magnetic flux was out of alignment. And he literally traveled France, curing people by touching them with magnetized rods. This Austrian doctor's name was Franz Anton Mesmer, hence the term mesmerism. More recently, in the year 1842, Dr. James Braid witnessed the phenomenon, its somber-like appearance. And he coined a phrase borrowing from the Greek god of sleep, hypnos, hence the term hypnosis. But let me assure you, hypnosis is not sleep. And you could prove this to yourself tonight, if you're a consenting adult. At about three in the morning, wake yourself and whisper into the ear of a sleeping bedmate. And try to get that person to do something he or she would not ordinarily do for you. It does not work, God knows I've tried. Rather, hypnosis is a relationship of trust between the subject and the operator. Now, there are three types of people who cannot be hypnotized. First is the idiot. By that, I do mean the clinical definition. Those with reduced mental capabilities cannot focus their attention long enough to go into a state of hypnosis. The second type of person that cannot be hypnotized is the drunkard. But you're all under legal age here, so I know that's not a problem. The third type of person that cannot be hypnotized is the defiant, those who say, no, no, not me. And I'm at a disadvantage. I'm recognizable, and I wear the title, hypnotist. So someone could go, Nope, Michael, ain't happening. However, let me tell you this. Each and every one of you, regardless of age, has been hypnotized before. Nobody warned you first. You weren't able to put up your defenses. Examples. You're reading a book, you're watching a movie. You laugh, you cry. Your emotions have been tweaked by an external source. Hypnosis. This one, pretty common, you're driving along, and about 20 minutes go by, you don't remember all the landmarks you just passed. How, how did I get here? It's called road hypnosis. You go to the doctor, he rubs your arm with alcohol, says, ah, it's a little pressure, a little pinprick. Relax. Psst, done. If the same doctor took the same needle and said, hold on to the arm of the chair, it's a big son of a bitch, here it comes! It would hurt more. 
It's called waking hypnosis. Doctors and dentists use it all the time, but to make it nicer. Now, before we get started with the program, I'm going to give everyone here an opportunity to test for yourselves where you lie on a continuum. This is not a, a yes or a no proposition, but rather a variable. Where on that continuum do you lie in your ability to accept suggestion? We're gonna do that with two tests. I will show you what they are in advance because when we actually do them, we're gonna do them with our eyes closed, and that serves two purposes. With our eyes closed, you can better use your mind's eye to see, to feel, and to experience what it is I'm describing to you. Secondly, with your eyes closed, the people in the front rows won't be paranoid that the people behind them are watching. So I'm gonna show you what they are right now. Please follow along. Take your hands like this. Intertwine your fingers. Then when I say so, placing your hands palm up towards the ceiling like this. Go ahead. Now, if you are seated next to somebody with bad body odor, I apologize. But once you get into that position, I'm going to ask you to use your mind's eye, use your full imagination to see, to feel, and to experience what it is I'm describing to you. Go ahead, put your hands down. The second test involves the dominant hand, that's the one you write with. Bring it to eye level. Placing now your finger against your thumb, not like an okay sign, but rather fingerprint to thumbprint. At the same time, taking those other three fingers and pressing down towards those two. Again, once we get into that position, I'm going to ask that you use your mind's eye, use your full imagination to see, to feel, and to experience what it is I'm describing to you. Go ahead and put your hands down. Now, what does he mean, use my mind's eye? It's real simple. I'll give you an example of it. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and, and answer one question. How many windows are on the lower floor of your home? Go ahead, close your, close your eyes and figure it out. Now, it does not matter what the answer is. What does matter is what you were doing to get an answer. And if you were like most people, you started to your left, whatever room that was, let's say kitchen, and you went, well, there's one, two, three, and you saw where they were, then you went into the next room, living room, dining room, whatever it was, looking around. But what did you see while you had your eyes closed? Did you say, oh, there's a window and nothing else? Or did you see the counter, the sink, the condiments on the counter, the, the table dressed, the curtains, the drapes? Did you sense anything else, smells, textures like carpet as you were walking through that house in your mind with your mind's eye? So when we do these tests, that's where I want you to be as I'm describing these things to you Allow those visualizations to work in your brain. You'll have a better success. Okay, what I need from you is feet flat on the floor. Hands unclasped and in your laps, preferably your own. Then we're going to take a deep breath together, and upon exhaling is where we're going to go for silence number one. Deep breath, one, two, three. Silence number one, quietly exhale and relax in your chairs. Deep breath, one, two, three. Relax. One, two, three. Relax, close your eyes. Deep breath, one, two, three. Relax. Eyes closed more comfortable in your seats, one, two, three, and relax, eyes closed. Now intertwining your fingers like I showed you earlier, putting your hands together nice and tight, placing both palms up towards the ceiling, one, two, three, elbows as straight as they will go. 
using your mind's eye, using your full imagination, see, feel, and experience as each and every one of your fingers is beginning to swell, becoming larger and fatter with every passing second, every breath you take, larger and fatter still, you can feel them growing and growing and growing. As they continue to grow larger and fatter, you feel that your hands are now interlocked like a giant jigsaw puzzle, growing larger and fatter still. You can no longer determine which fingers belong to which hand as all of it grows larger and fatter every passing second, every breath you take, larger and larger still. Feel now that from one wrist all the way over to the other, all of it has become one bone, one set of flesh, one set of muscle, all of it growing larger and larger still. Now from one elbow all the way across to the other, one bone, one set of muscle, one set of flesh, larger and larger. Now from one shoulder all, all the way across to the other, it has become one bone, one set of muscle, one set of flesh, growing larger and fatter with every passing second, every breath you take, larger and larger still. In just a moment, upon the count of three, you're going to attempt to separate your hands. You will not be able to do it. The harder you try, the more difficult it will become. You cannot separate them. Trying on the count of three, one, two, three, pull. Pull harder. Pull harder. Harder. Separate them now. <laughs> 